Welcome to the Harper Classroom, a series of instructional videos. This academic video is on the break-even analysis. I will define the break-even problem to be a company is deciding which process to select for their operations, automated, cellular, or job shop. One criteria is cost, so they've identified the fixed cost per year and the variable cost per unit of production. Along with the break-even problem, I'll define the problem-solving process. And I'll do that in three stages. The definition or recognition of the problem, the solution, application of mechanics in the presentation, or communication of the results. Let's start with the definition. It's important to define the problem. First, to recognize that a problem actually exists. Second, to recognize what kind of problem it is. And third, once you've recognized the problem, to define the approach, the technique, the methodology you use to solve the problem. I will do this in two stages. The first is the extreme value approach, and the second is the patterns within the problem. Let's look at the extreme value approach. Well, an extreme value on the low side of production would be zero. I'd never produce zero, but what if I did? Then my variable cost would go to zero, and then my fixed cost would be 110, 80, and 75, so a job shop would have the lowest cost. Well, the principle is for very low production amounts, job shop will have a lower cost than the other two. The other extreme value is a very high production. Let's say 1 million units. Well, if my unit variable cost is 2, 4, and 5, then my automated will be $2 million, 110,000, 4 million, 80, and 5 million, 75, then the lowest cost would be automated. So for very high production amounts, automated would have a lower cost than the other two. So for very low production, job shop will be the lowest cost. For very high production, automated will be the lowest cost. Since they're different, there must be a production between zero and a million such that the cost is going to be the same, and that's break-even. The second is the patterns. Well, when the fixed cost decreases as the variable cost increases, that pattern indicates a break-even problem. For example, Suppose the 2 and the 5 were reversed. In other words, the 5 is up here, and then the 2 comes down here. Well, then the job shop has the lowest fixed cost, and if the 2 is down here, then the job shop will have the lowest variable cost. Since the job shop has the lowest cost on fixed and variable cost, then there is no break-even. The job shop is always the lowest cost. Well, to recognize this, you don't want to waste time, money, resources trying to find the solution to a problem that does not exist. And that does happen. Second, let's look at the solution or the application of the mechanics. Once we know what kind of problem it is, then how do we find the break-even? Again, I will approach this in two ways. First, understand the problem and two, validate your answers with mathematics. Now these two need to go together. They support one another. First, understand the problem. Well, if I look at cellular and job shop here, if I produce zero, then my cellular is $5,000 more than my job shop. But when I start producing, cellular will save $1 per unit of production. Well, how much do I produce in saving one dollar per unit to save up five thousand. I produce five thousand. Because five thousand times four is twenty thousand plus eighty is one hundred thousand. Five thousand times five is twenty five thousand plus seventy five thousand is one hundred thousand. The cost is the same. So that's going to be the break even, somewhere around five thousand. We've already established the principle that very low production amounts, job shop will have a lower cost, but now we're understanding the problem. How low is low? Everything below 5,000. What about automated and cellular? Again, if I produce nothing, automated is 30,000 greater than cellular. But as I start producing, I save $2 per unit. Well, how many do I produce at savings $2 per unit to make up the 30,000? It's going to be 15,000. So for very high production, automated will have the cheapest cost. How high is high? Everything above 15000 So now we're beginning to understand the problem. 
pretty much where the break-evens are and how to interpret them. Well, the second, notice I don't say find the answers, I say validate your answers. Because we already know pretty much where the answers are, 5,000 and 15,000. Let's use math to validate those answers. Well, the mathematics is let X be the annual production. The break-even between automated and cellular, you bring your fixed cost down. You bring a variable cost down. Solve for X, and there's your 15,000. That's what we expected. Between cellular and job shop, bring your fixed cost down. Bring your variable cost down times X, your production. Solve for X, there's your 5,000. And notice the mathematics was used to validate our understanding of the problem. These two must go together, and I highly recommend that you understand the problem before you go to the mathematics, because the math could be wrong. But if these do not support one another, if the math is wrong, then the understanding of the problem will help you with the math. But if the math is right and the understanding is wrong, well, the math will help you understand the problem. These two must go together. The presentation or communication of results in business is important because even though you have the answer, you have to communicate it in such a way that people can actually use the answer. There's many modes of communication, presentations and memos or reports. I'll use a simple graph. Now in this break-even graph on the x-axis I have my annual production, here's my cost. Uh, for an annual production of zero, uh, then my cost will just be my fixed cost, 75, 80, and 110. There's my 75,000, 80,000, and 110. And as I begin to produce, I add my variable cost of $2, $4, and $5 a unit for automated, cellular, and job shop. Well, the value of a graph is you can see where they cross and where the break-even uh, break productions are at 5,000 and 15,000. But also you can see what happens if you do not have a break-even, if you're at a production something other than the break-even. So not only can you actually see the answer, you can visualize what happens if you don't have the answer, and it helps to understand the problem. And so communication and presentation of the results are going to be just as important in business as, getting the, as, as obtaining the results or getting the results. So this ends the break-even analysis. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.